Hello and welcome to CAMH RegCap Survey Training. I'll go ahead and start by pointing out, as always, that we're using RegCap version 9.1.16 here. So if you're using a different version of RegCap, things might look slightly different to you, but don't worry because I think the same principles should generally apply here. So if you've been following along in this video series, you'll recall that we've looked at a few different ways to deploy our surveys. Um, one way was through the public survey link, which in this case just gives you a generic survey link that you can kind of deploy anywhere. You can email it out or put it on a poster or turn it into a QR code and post that somewhere. But basically this link will let anybody click it and follow through and answer your survey anonymously, which is great. Uh, the other option we looked at is to use the participant list. So in this scenario, it would be somewhere or a scenario where you would know the email address of your participants, and you would enter them into this list here, and you could use Compose Survey invitations to send out email, uh, email invitations to them. And then you would know if they've responded to your survey, and you can even go so far as to include this participant identifier option, which will let you link um, their actual record to their email address here. Of course, this would make their responses no longer anonymous which uh, may or may not be what you're looking for. Um, yes, and this method is handy because it allows you to send subsequent follow-up surveys. So using something like uh, the automa automated survey invitations, um, the invitations would always be able to refer back to this email address um, to send subsequent events or additional surveys. Uh, the problem is, if you were to use something like the public survey link, you wouldn't be able to do that because you wouldn't have the email address. So a scenario might arise where, let's say, you want to put a generic link out there, um, and you also want, but you, sorry, you also want to send uh, subsequent follow-up uh, surveys or assessments at a later time. So normally you wouldn't be able to do that, um, but the good news is there is a way, and I'm about to show it to you. But before we do that, I just want to point out that with this method, you're starting to get into a little more complicated territory, both in terms of the complexity of the project but more importantly uh, in terms of uh, participant privacy because using this method you're going to be linking the participant email address directly to their study data and this is a bit different than the participant list because even though we're linking it here uh, the email address is not going to come out in a data export whereas using the method I'm about to show you the email address will come out in a data export again linking that personal information directly to the survey responses and so this might be uh, more problematic or definitely a tougher sell if you're doing a research project and uh, need to get RAB approval. Because if you're collecting an email address and then asking potentially sensitive questions about like drug use or homelessness or something else that participants might not be so comfortable with sharing, um, it's going to be much more difficult if you're asking those questions and linking it to the person's identity. So I just want to put that warning out there ahead of time so we know what we're working with here. Okay, so with that aside, uh, there's a few things that we need to set up here. So first of all, we actually need to go into our first form here, and we need to add a new field to collect the email address, which in this case, it's just a text box, which we'll call email, call the variable name email. And the important thing here is that this field validation, we need to set this to email, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, I'm also going to call this required because in this scenario we do need to collect this email address for our subsequent surveys. So I'll go ahead and save. And I will go back here and the other piece to this, well there's two other pieces. Uh, I'll come back to automated invitations in a second. Uh, we need to go to project setup and what we're interested in is, oh it's already been enabled here so that's great, but normally this would be disabled. And when we go ahead and enable it, we're going to get this sort of red cap style wall of text here. But it's just pointing out the few considerations that we need to think about when using this feature. Um, so first, uh, I should just again point out that uh, red cap is warning us that re the responses will never be anonymous. So something to keep in mind. And it's also explaining that um, this method is useful if your first uh, form is not a survey. So when you use the participant list option um, over in survey distribution tools, in that case, your first survey, sorry, your first instrument has to be a survey, otherwise it won't work. Uh, using this method, that's not necessarily the case. So there could be some scenarios where um, that might be applicable to you. Uh, it's also saying that if the email address is captured in the participant list, that will actually supersede what's captured here. 
So like I mentioned before, this is where things can like start to get a little more complicated with your project. And once you start using email addresses in different places, it, it can sort of get complicated pretty quickly. Um, those conditions aside, uh, what we're actually interested in here is this drop-down list at the top. And what this is doing is just giving us a list of all of the fields that we set as email fields. So from that validation drop-down. And in this case, we've just specified the one. So I'll go ahead and select that and say save. All right. So the other thing that we need to set up here is our automated automated invitations. Um, so you you might recall that I had set this up in a previous video um, to send out our, our PHQ nine here after somebody had completed our screening survey and indicated that they want to quit. So this is going to be pretty much exactly the same setup as we used with our participant list option, except this time instead of using the participant list to get the email address, uh, it's going to be using this email address we just specified. Um, so I'll just go ahead and activate this and say close. And so I think we are ready to enter in a test record here. So I'll go over to survey distribution tools and instead of going to the participant list and entering my email address, this time I'm just going to open the public facing survey. And I will enter my email. Enter in some data here. And just filling out my conditions for my automated survey invitations here. Uh, and I will say submit. And I'll say close. And actually, you'll notice here I'm actually getting my survey notification, which I'd set up in a previous video uh, right here. So just a little email letting me know that somebody, myself in this case, has completed my smoking screening survey. So that's nice. Um, OK, so now that I have completed uh, that screening survey, I can actually go into my survey invitation log under survey distribution tools here. And you'll see that my automated survey invitation has been scheduled. And you'll notice that under participant email, this has been captured uh, from what I entered, and it's linking it to the record I just created. So once again, uh, the data that I've entered here is not anonymous. Um, and you know what, I might actually go so far as to point out that if you look at your data export here, you'll see, uh, unlike the other fields where I was using the participant list option, uh, my data is, or sorry, my email address is right here. So if we were to do the export data function, um, uh, it would come out as part of the data. Anyways, going back to our survey invitation log here, um, we can see from our automated survey invitation that this PHQ-9 is scheduled to go out tomorrow at 424. And I meant to point this out in an earlier video, but let's say that you actually didn't want to send it at this time. Maybe you wanted to push it up to today or cancel it entirely. Uh, the good news is you can do that um, just by clicking this little pencil here. There we go. And then simply just entering a new date and time for the invitation. Uh, and this is a pretty simple feature. Whoops, why didn't this work? Let's try that again. There we go, much better. Um, so yeah, it's just a little simple thing to be aware of, but I think sometimes people are not sh or not aware that you can do that. Um, so you can edit it, and if you wanted to cancel it entirely, you can just cancel it here. Uh, so maybe let's give that a try. And you know, if you do cancel it by accident, you can go back into the participant list. And you'll see that this email address has now been added to the participant list with the corresponding record. So if you did want to go ahead and reschedule that PHQ-9 invitation, just make sure that you select it from the drop-down list of uh, surveys here. And then you can simply just go ahead and compose your survey invitation like we have before. Uh, this time, of course, just putting in whatever specific time you wanted to reschedule it. Uh, you might need to retype your email and subject line here. And then finally, just making sure that you select the appropriate email address with the ID, which RegCap has reminded us here. And then you can send the invitation. Um, so the last thing I wanted to show using this method is um, where things can become even more complex. But let's go back here to the online, des online designer. So let's say you had your smoking screener 
which uh, uses the email invitation field in an automatic survey invitation to selectively send a PHQ-9 to somebody who says they want to quit smoking. Uh, let's say you wanted to add an additional um, survey here, uh, just a simple one that just reports the total score and sends that over to the patient's physician. Um, this does become more complicated because, because now you've introduced a new or a second email address into this survey workflow here. So the good news is, once again, you can do this in RankCap uh, because this is a feature they added, I think, probably around version 8 or so. So first of all, uh, let's go ahead and just create that little report form. I don't know, let's just call it report. Yeah, let's call it physician report. And we'll enable it as a survey. And you know, you could go ahead and like copy over your survey settings from another from your other survey, but I'm not so worried about that right now, so I'll just say save changes. And all I want to include in this report is a single field of descriptive text. And I just want to pipe in um, the total score. And unfortunately, I can't remember what the variable name is, so I need to go back and check what that is. Uh, PHQ9 underscore total underscore. Uh, so I was on the right track. Just copy that. And go back into position report. Add our piped value here. I'll just call this position total score. Because the idea here, like I mentioned, is we want our participant to complete the PHQ-9 and then have this score emailed over to the physician so they can take a look. Um, but the other thing we need to do here is we need to put somewhere for this physician email to be entered. So in this case, we can go into the PHQ-9 and we'll enter in a new email field. So just like we entered the email field before, we might say, please enter your physician's email address. Call this PHQ9 phys email. And again, the important part is to specify this email, or the, or this field with validation of uh, email. And then we'll say required because we do, we are going to need this if we want to send it over to the physician. And actually, the other thing. Maybe it's not so important for this physician email address, but I should have done this actually in the first email address that we collected. But we should mark it as an identifier because doing this will allow us to quickly um, screen this out of any data exports. So it's just kind of a handy little step to have um, to provide some kind of mitigation strategy of having um, PII in the project. Like I said, it's maybe not so important for the physician email address, but it is a good thing to, um, to select for your participant email address. Anyways, I'll go ahead and save that. And so here's where this trick comes in. Um, so in our survey settings, or sorry, our survey setup here, uh, we use this field to designate uh, kind of a global email address for the project. And in this case, RedCap will kind of turn to this uh, email address for any um, emails that it sends. However, because we want um, our physician email to go, uh, sorry, because we want our physician report to go to a physician, uh, we need to actually specify a different email address for this report to draw from. So uh, in this case, you can go into survey settings and we'll scroll down to this setting here, survey specific email invitation field. And so when this is not selected, again, it's going to draw from that global one, which would be the participant email address. But this time we're going to select uh, our PHQ-9 physician email. So now uh, we can go ahead and save this. Uh, if we set up our automated survey invitations, um, we can just say physician report or PHQ-9 report. And so we want to say when the PHQ-9 is complete. And this time, because again, we've specified 
that specific setting in the survey settings, the to address here will take that physician email address. And then we can just say send immediately. Um, and then we'll activate this. And yeah, I think that's all good. So we'll say save and close. And now let's just have a look at how this will work. So I'm going to go into the record status dashboard and go into the PHQ-9. Although this is scheduled, I think resales will do it for tomorrow. I'm just going to go ahead and open it now and open it in survey view. Uh, put in today's date. Uh, so for my physician email address, I'm just going to put my own email address in here again. And I'm not going to fill out any of these things, but I am going to put in a total score here. I'm not sure what PHQ-9 scores go to, but I'll just put in 100 and I'll hit submit. And then I'll close the survey. And then, uh, yeah, I will leave without saving changes here. Um, but yeah, this is great. So I've gotten two e emails here. One is that the survey was completed. So this was my, um, well, let's see, I, I got two here. Yeah, so I had two. Um, this one is my survey notification, just letting me know that it's complete. But this one, I've got uh, my physician PHQ-9 report. So, I mean, it's not a great example because I've used the same email address in all of these cases, but I think you probably get the idea is that it's drawn um, the email address that we entered in our other form and then sent me this report. So the physician could click this link and go into RedCap and review that score um, just by clicking this link. So I think that does it for this method of survey distribution. Um, you know, like I said, things can get a little complicated here once you start working with multiple email addresses going to different people and different forums and different events. But really, you just kind of need to play around with these things and get a feel for it yourself. And once you do, things should become a little clearer. Okay, so I guess that's it for this video. I'm not quite sure what I'll be covering next. So for now, I'll just say uh, I'll be signing off and uh, best of luck with your RedCap data collection.